Hello, welcome to my channel and thanks for tuning into this video. Today I'm going over my whole Sonia G brush collection. So if you'd like to see that, just keep on watching. Okay, I'm going to start, I think, with the eye brushes. I have considerably more face brushes than eye brushes, so I think we'll just get through the eyes first. And I'm going to start with the three from the Kiyaki set. I have a whole other video on the Kiyaki set, so I'm going to link that below. And as of today, the Kiyaki set is still available on Beautylish. So if you were interested in it, it's still there. And my understanding is that once it's gone, it's gone forever. So if you want it, um, I would just pick it up as soon as you can. So the three brushes that are in the Kiyaki set are the Flat Definer, the Mini Booster, and the Jumbo Blender. The Mini Booster from this set I don't use too much because I have the full size of it. So I'm just going to leave that and I'll talk about the full size one in a moment. But I did want to talk about these because these are two of my favorite eye brushes. And these are both from the Sky Eye set. So they can be bought as part of that set and they can also be bought individually with the longer handles. The flat definer is really awesome for doing your underneath the eye shadow. It's also really great for liner along the lash line. And it's also really great for adding very precise um, definition on any part of the eye. So I really like to use this on my outer corner with a deeper shadow if I need to add a bit more depth there or if I'm doing more of a halo type eye, I can use it on the inner corner as well for the same purpose. And it just blends really beautifully. It doesn't leave harsh lines, but it gives you that precise application and it's just a really, really useful brush. And in a pinch, it could really be your one and done eye brush because you can technically use it to do like an all over shading and blending and so on. So it's a really, really useful brush. The Jumbo Blender is also really useful. You can see it's quite large. The bristles I find are quite dense in it, a little bit tapered, but it's really great for a one and done eyeshadow. So like those Chantecai single shadows or any shadow that you just want to put one shadow on and be done with it. This is great because it picks up a lot of product because of the density and it puts it on really quickly because it's so large and it covers so much of the surface area of your eye. It's also flexible enough to blend up in the crease and I think in a pinch you could maybe use it under the eye but for me it's a little bit too big even though it is tapered it's just a little bit too wide for going underneath the eye but for the lid it's really great i have three other eye brushes so i have the mini booster which i mentioned i find it might just be an optical illusion but i find that the full-sized one here is a little bit um thinner at the tip whereas the Kiyaki one seems a little bit more splayed out. And the Kiyaki one, of course, is undyed goat hair. And so are these ones in the Kiyaki set. Undyed goat hair is better for creams. You're really not recommended to use dyed goat hair with cream. So that to me is the main difference between dyed and undyed. This one is dyed goat hair. And this is great for doing more precise, smaller blending. So generally what I do, my sort of standard eye procedure is to use the classic crease, which is this one here. And this is perfect for the crease and transition and just really getting that on quickly and just blending it out. But you don't have to worry about getting shadow all the way down on the lid with this one. With the jumbo blender, you're probably going to get shadow on your lid as well. So this is transition and crease. And then I take this one and I usually take a slightly darker shadow and just get more defined into the crease. It just doesn't blend out as far. If I wanted more definition, I'd use this um, flat definer. So the mini booster is perfect for that sort of mid range color that I like to do. Just adding a little bit more depth and concentration of color on the eyelid or on the crease. The sky set is perfect for smaller eyes as well. So I really appreciate the whole uh, range of the sky eye and face set actually 
as I do have a little bit of a smaller eye area and a slightly smaller face. The last brush for the eyes that I have is the Soft Shader. So this is also from the Skyline. All the ones with the blue handles are Sky. Soft Shader is really great for cream shadows. You can see it's undyed goat hair, so certainly appropriate for creams. And it just picks them up really well, blends them out really easily, sort of like the Jumbo Blender. It has that versatility where you can pack on color with it, but you're also able to blend it out a little bit. And unlike the Jumbo Blender, this one is a bit smaller on the tip, a little bit more pinched. And so it's great for underneath the eyes as well. From the eyes, I mean, I would recommend all of them. If you are gonna get the Kiyaki set, just do that because you're going to have everything that you really need in that. But if you're buying individually, I would recommend if I were to do them in order that I would buy them, I would buy Classic Crease first. Then I would get the Flat Definer because it is so versatile and I really like it for my small eyes. And then I'd probably get this one because it's just really great with creams and versatile as well. And then, I don't know which one of the Mini Booster or the Jumbo Blender I would get first. Probably for me the Mini Booster, just because I do use it more often. But if you like single shadows and one and done kind of shadow looks, then the Jumbo Blender would be the choice for you. Those are all of my Sonia G eye brushes. And now let's move on to the face. I have to figure out how I'm gonna do this. I'll start with the Kiyaki ones too, because I have a whole video on those, so I'm just gonna go over these quickly. This is the mini base. This is a combination of goat hair and synthetic fibers. All of her other brushes that I have are 100% goat hair. This one's a combination. And this one I love for my powder foundation. So my Fenty powder foundation, which is really the only powder foundation that I put all over my face. This is the perfect brush for that. So if you want to see more about that, you can watch my Fenty powder foundation review. I'll link that below too. But for me, this is just the perfect brush for that. And that's really what I mainly use it for. The other one from the Kiyaki set is the Classic Face. And I love this brush for bronzer. I was using it for blush and it's really great for that too, but I've since acquired another blush brush, which I'll talk about later that I prefer. But this for bronzer is awesome. Again, it's a little bit smaller than what you might think of as a typical bronzer brush, but I like to have a little bit more control of how I'm doing my bronzer. And as I said, my face is just a little bit uh, smaller. And also I don't like my bronzer to be too intense. So this is fluffy enough that it doesn't overly concentrate the color. It blends it out enough, but also it's small enough that it doesn't just spread all over my whole face. So that's a really great brush. Both of these are only in the Kiyaki set as of now. So these are not available as individual brushes. Now I think I'm gonna talk about my fan brushes. Sonia G is kind of known for her fan brushes and she loves fan brushes herself. And so she's done a really good job with all of her fan brushes that I've tried. The first one that I think I got was this one here, which was the Sculpt 2. And this I think remains my favorite of the four fan brushes that I have from her. I love the size of this. This is great for bronzer and particularly for bronzers that are harder to pick up. So sometimes those baked gelée formulas are harder to pick up. The one that I use this most with is from that Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm palette. I have the Lightgasm shade of that, and I was never able to use that bronzer because I just didn't have any brushes that would pick it up. But this brush picks it up so beautifully and blends it out so wonderfully and it's just perfect for that formula and any formulas that are sort of along those lines, really hard pressed or really hard to pick up. This is also great because you can get a more concentrated application, so you can use this for contour as well, and it just fits right into the hollow of the cheek there, but then it's also versatile enough that you can, you can use it on its side as well and do it up on the forehead or you know get a little bit of uh, a wider application. I know a lot of people like to use this for highlight as well. For me, it's just a little bit too big for highlight, and I have another one that I prefer for that. 
but this is really great for bronzer and contour. Uh, it's dyed goat hair, so I would recommend using it only with powders and not with creams. If you wanted one to use with creams, you could go for either the Worker Fan or the Sculpt 4. The Sculpt 4, I think, is my least used at this point of my Sonia G brushes, but I do use it for cream contour and sometimes cream bronzer. It's an interesting shape. You can see it's sort of longer on this edge, so it's really great at getting, again, into the hollows of the cheeks. And also, because this part is longer here, it's more flexible. So if you need to blend it out a little bit further, you can go like that. Or you can also put highlight on there and really diffuse it out onto your cheekbone as well. You could use it with blush as well. I mean, all of these are very versatile brushes. But for some reason, I just don't use this one quite as much, and I'm not quite sure why. I just don't find that it moves as easily in my hand and on my face as the other ones. The Worker Fan is the most recent addition to my fan brushes. And this one, I think, is very versatile. As you can see, it's undyed goat hair, so appropriate to use with creams. It's quite similar to the Sculpt 2 except that this one is more flexible and the fibers are less densely packed and also it's a different kind of fiber. I think every all the other ones that I've mentioned so far have Psycoho goat hair. This one has a different kind of goat hair which I'm just going to look up. Psycoho is basically the highest grade of goat hair or the highest sort of um, readily available grade of goat hair. This is Hak Hakutotsuho, Hakutotsuho goat hair. Uh, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but it's a thicker goat hair basically and it's not quite as soft as the others. It is still very soft but you can feel the difference. Um, this one I don't use as much either just because I love the Sculpt 2 so much for bronzer and this one basically would serve the same purpose except that it's going to diffuse a little bit more. It's also meant to be able to use for like blush and highlighter, that's why it's the worker fan, it's supposed to be especially versatile, but I just have other specialized ones that I prefer for it. But if you were looking for just one fan brush to kind of do everything, then this would probably be a great choice for you. The last of my Sonia G fan brushes is the Sculpt 3, and I really love this for highlighter, and that's basically all I use it for. You could use it for like powder, you could do it under the eyes, around the nose, anywhere really, but I, I like to just use it for highlighter. I like having specialized brushes a lot of the time because I don't want to keep washing them all the time. I always wipe off on a microfiber towel in between uses, but I just, I still wouldn't want to be using this if it, if I'd used it for like a pretty strong highlighter, I wouldn't want to be powdering my nose and under my eyes with it. So that's just my preference. Um, but this is really perfect for highlighter. It picks up hard pressed and baked gelée highlighters really, really well. And it can give you a really strong application, but you can diffuse it out really easily, nice and small, so you can get a precise application. It's just perfect for me. So I really, really love this Sculpt 3. Okay, just four brushes left. Let's start with the Mini Cheek. This one uh, was one of the first Sonia G brushes that I got and I got it because I wanted to use it for highlighter. And I do think this is great for highlighter if you want a really a more diffused application and I like it for traditional powder highlighters. Whereas I like the fan for harder pressed and baked formulas, this is great for just traditional powder formulas. And it just, it's small enough that it can give you a bit of a precise application, but really soft and really good at blending. This can also be used for blush. If you like a more precise application of blush or you have smaller face, this is great for that as well. This, I think, is a combination of dyed and undyed goat hairs. So again, I would still not really recommend it for creams, but it works really great for powders. Now, this is the Designer Pro. When I do specific placement of powder, I think this is really great. 
I have two Wayne Goss brushes that I also use a lot for precise application of powder under the eyes, on in the T-zone, and so on. But those ones from Wayne Goss are both blue squirrel hair, and I find that they can get kind of gunked up quite quickly. So that's a bit of an issue, and then that makes me want to wash them more, but you're supposed to be really gentle with squirrel hair brushes, so I don't like to wash them too much. So that's where this comes in. This is goat hair, so it's much more durable than the blue squirrel hair, and it just doesn't get as gunky as quickly. So you can go a little bit longer in between washes. It has a really nice sort of tapered shape to it. That's why it's really great for under the eyes, and it's super soft, so it's never gonna be like pokey or scratchy on even the most sensitive of skin. And I think that's true for all of these Sonia G brushes, by the way. They're very, very soft, and I've never experienced any issues with irritation around the most sensitive skin on my eyes with them. This is one of my most recent acquisitions from Sonia G, and this is the Soft Cheek. So this one is my favorite blush brush now, and it's basically the only brush I've been using for powder blushes since I got it. It's just the perfect size. It's not too big. You can control where you're placing the product and it's just, it's super soft. It's very like fluffy and flexible as you can see here. And it's just really perfect. It picks up all different textures of blush I find and it just diffuses them so beautifully. Really recommend this if you're looking for a good blush brush. This is top notch. And then last but not least, we have the Smooth Buffer. And this is one that I got back in the fall. So it was one of my earlier um, purchases within the Sonia G brushes. And I wasn't using this as much until probably the last month or so, maybe six weeks or so. And I've just been using it pretty much every day in the last uh, little while. And this, I think it softened up a bit with a few washes and that's why I've been using it more. It was a little bit more stiff than I was expecting it when I first got it and so that's probably why I wasn't using it as much. But this is really perfect for buffing out your makeup and that's what I use it for. When I've got my bronzer and blush and highlight on, I almost always now go over it with this and it's just perfect. It buffs everything in, makes sure everything is really seamless and sunken into the skin. It removes a little bit of the intensity, but it doesn't remove the color that you were looking for when you put down your product. So I think it's really great. It helps to have something that is just going to go over and make sure that none of the colors are too glaring. There's nothing, you know, standing out too much. So this is great for a really seamless finishing step. And it works great on its own, so you don't have to put powder on it. And usually I actually don't put powder on it. But if I need to tone down colors a little bit more, then I'll use a powder, something like the Chantecaille here. Uh, just a really light finishing type of powder. And I'll just dab it in there and finish off my cheeks and forehead and so on with that. I don't think I can rank the face brushes, but maybe I'll just say if I could get one from for each part of my face, I'll tell you what I would get. If I were getting one highlight brush, it would be this, the Sculpt 3. If I could get one bronzer slash contour brush, it would be this one, the Sculpt 2. Unless I really wanted to be able to also use creams with it and I would get the worker fan instead. For blush, I would definitely, definitely get the soft cheek. And for powder application, it would certainly be the Designer Pro. I should quickly go over the handles as well. So they're all wooden handles and the Kiyaki set are this more sort of matte finish, whereas all the other ones are a lacquered finish. So the sky ones come with the blue and there's a very faint sort of glitter in with the blue and then they fade into this black and they're quite lightweight. The sky ones taper in the shape. The pro ones also taper down to a finer point, not really a point to just a finer end there. And pro ones and her original line 
have the red, um, the red paint that fades into black. The original ones have a quite a thick base on them. So they're, to me, I enjoy using the ones with the tapered base a little bit more, but these are not difficult to use in any way and they have a certain presence to them. They're quite lovely as well. I know that a lot of her brushes go in and out of stock and it can be quite a long wait before they come back into stock, but it's worth the wait for them really. What you can do if you're waiting for any to come back in stock is you can go on the Beautylish website and you can get an email notification when something comes back in stock. So that's what I do. I had to wait quite a while to get the soft cheek and um, I think this fan brush took a while to come back, but they do come back eventually. And you can also follow Sonia on Instagram. She often posts updates about you know, the progress and when she's expecting brushes to come back in. She also has an excellent blog where you can find a lot more information about her brushes. She does comparisons with other brushes and brushes in her line. She has, if you're looking for a fan brush, for example, she has a whole article on all her fan brushes and how they compare and how she prefers to use each one of them. So her blog, Sweet Makeup Temptations, is a really wonderful resource for anyone interested in her brushes as well. And Beautylish is great too. They have really extensive descriptions of each of the brushes. They tell you what kind of goat hair, they tell you the measurements and what they're sort of meant to be used for as well. And I find the reviews on Beautylish are very helpful too. I think that's it for today's video. Uh, if you are thinking of buying some of these brushes, I'm sure you might have questions, so please feel free to leave your questions below and I will do my best to answer them. And if you have any other comments or questions or anything, I'd love to see those below as well. And if you would like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!